So exception one, into the total distribution on line 4A, if you rolled over, roll over part or all of the distribution from one uh, Roth, uh, Roth IRA to another Roth IRA or uh, IRA other than a Roth IRA to a qualified plan, another IRA other than a Roth IRA. So this becomes important with any, any money that you have under the umbrella of a retirement plan. We're talking here about IRAs, but similar kind of concepts if they're in like a 401k plan or something. If, if you want to roll that into some other investment, like another IRA, then because you want to switch financial institutions, for example, you want to go from one financial institution to another, uh, then you, you can't, you got to be very careful, careful in that process because if you if it's shown as you distributing the money and then reinvesting the money now you're going to get hit with the tax for pulling the money out and you're going to be hit with the with possibly penalties for pulling it out early so if you're going to try to move from one financial institution to the other it's usually pretty easy to do because you can talk to the financial institution that you want to do business with and they will usually quite quite happily try to help you out to, to make it a rollover distribution and make sure it's properly recorded as a rollover and shown on the 1099 as a rollover so that so that you can tell the IRS, look, at, yeah, it went from here to here, but it's not a distribution. It shouldn't be a triggering tax event and I shouldn't be penalized on it. So also enter rollover next to line 4B. So if the total distribution was rolled over, enter zero on line 4B. So this also applies if you're talking to anybody that's switching jobs or something like that, or they want to go to another financial institution or something like that. You want to be able to tell them, make sure that you are categorizing something as a rollover, not as a distribution. Talk to the financial institutions, make sure that you know they're, they're working that out so, so it's not going to be a distribution, but a rollover. So if the total distribution wasn't rolled over, enter the part not rolled over on line 4B unless exception exceptional outstanding two applies to the part not rolled over. Generally, a rollover must be made within 60 days after the day you receive the distribution. So there's this time limit. Usually these days, it can be kind of a pretty much same day if you're doing a rollover from one institution to another. Otherwise, you've got this kind of day limitation. So you want to make sure that you're within the threshold. So for more details on rollovers, you can see publication 590A and publication 590B. So if you rolled over the distribution into a qualified plan and you made the rollover in 2023, include a statement explaining what you did. So exception two, if any of the following apply, enter the total distributions on line 4A and see form 8606 and its instructions to figure the amount to enter on line 4B. One, if you received a distribution from an IRA other than a Roth IRA and you made non-deductible contributions to any of your uh, traditional or SEP IRAs for 2022 or an earlier year. If you made non-deductible contributions to these IRAs for 2022, see publication 590A and publication 590B too. You received a distribution from a Roth IRA but if either A or B below applies, enter zero on line 4B, you don't have to see form 8606 or its instructions. A, distribu distribution code T. So notice these are gonna be the codes in the form 1099. So now you've got a code T. It's shown in box uh, seven of form 1099R and you made a contribution including conversion to a Roth IRA for 2016 or an earlier year. B, distribution code Q is shown in box seven of form 1099R. So when you look at those distribution codes, those are gonna be an indication of like the kind of distribution that is put in place. And we can look at the instructions for the 1099R to give us more detail of what those distribution codes are. So if we have more exotic distribution code, instead of just like a one or something like that or seven, then, then you could, then we can, you know, research it from that point three. You converted part or all of the traditional SEP, SEP, or simple IRA to a Roth IRA in 2022. Four, you had a 2021 or 2022 IRA contribution returned to you with the related earnings or less, uh, or less any loss by the due date, including extensions of your tax return for that year. 
five, you made excess contributions to the IRA for an earlier year and had them returned to you in 2022. So we have some uh, issues with regards to the limits of how much we can put into an IRA in the case that you over put into the IRA and then you got it returned, for example. So, you, okay, so six, you uh, recharacterize part or all of the contribution to a Roth IRA as contribution to another type of IRA or vice versa. So exception three, if all or part of the distribution is a qualified charitable distribution, a QCD, enter the total distribution on line 4A. So if the total amount distributed is a QCD, enter zero on line 4B. So if we had a distribution from, from a retirement plan, it's usually gonna be you know, a taxable, a, a, it might be a taxable event for us. So in some cases you might say, well, I'd I, maybe I'd, if, I, if there's some way I can give that distribution as say a charitable contributions, then possibly I can get a tax benefit in some way possibly by going directly to the charitable. So that would be more of an unusual kind of situation, but possible opportunities uh, for tax planning if, if you have, if you would like to you know, look into that in more detail. So if only part of the distribution is a QCD, uh, enter the part that is not a QCD on line 4B, unless exception two applies to that part, enter QCD next to line 4B. A QCD, Qualified uh, Charitable Distribution, is a distribution made directly by a trustee of your IRA other than an ongoing SEP or simple IRA to an organization eligible to receive tax deductible contributions, in essence, a charity with certain exceptions. You must have been at least 70 and a half when the distribution was made. Generally, your total uh, QCDs, Qualified Charitable Contributions, for the year can't be more than $100,000. On a joint return, your spouse can also have a QCD up to 100,000. The amount of the QCD is limited to the amount that would otherwise be included in your income. So if your IRA includes non-deductible contributions, the distribution uh, is first considered to be paid out of otherwise, of otherwise taxable income, see publication, 590B for more details. So if that applies to you, you can do some more research there. Caution, you can't claim a charitable contribution deduction for any QCD not included in your income, which kind of makes sense, right? You're trying to do some tax planning, saying there's gonna be a taxable event. What if I contribute this to the charity? If you do that, is it possible that I don't have to include the income that would otherwise be included as income? in income if that's the case you already got a benefit by not including it in income and would be double dipping if you were able to not include it in income and get a charitable deduction for it right that would be a double dip exception four if all or part of the distribution is a health savings account an hsa funding distribution f uh, hfd enter the total distribution on line 4a if the total amount distributed is an HFD and you elect to include it from income, enter zero on line 4B. If only part of the distribution is an HFD and you elect to include uh, exclude that part from income, enter the part that isn't an HFD on line 4B, unless exception two applies to that part, enter HFD next to line 4b so another somewhat unusual transaction where you're gonna have the distribution go directly here so an hfd is a distribution made directly by the trustee of your ira other than an ongoing sep or simple ira to your hsa so once again the idea being well there's going to be a distribution possibly a required distribution i'm going to have to pay taxes on it is there some way i can distribute it to say my my uh, HSA health savings account and possibly have a tax benefit in that way. So if eligible, you can generally elect to exclude an HFD from your income once in your lifetime. So once in your lifetime. So you can't exclude more than the limit. Limits, why couldn't I remember anything about limits? An HSA contribution or more than the amount that would otherwise be included in your income. 